I was like, oh, I just started talking and heard my voice. Like, like, in the like stereo. <laughs> yes. and we're ready. Ready? I guess. Okay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Teamwork Makes the Herding Cats. Herding Cats Dreamwork. Dreamwork. Cataloging in a consortium. It's fun. And you can see some sad kittens because they don't like being herded. Very accurate. <laughs> so I am Carol Witt. I am the Bibliographic Services Supervisor at CW Mars. I'm Liz Rudloff. I'm the consortium cataloger at Missouri Evergreen, obviously Missouri. Um, our third person, Kate, we're going to pretend she's here, but she's not. She had to leave early. So. Yes, but she is also from Missouri Evergreen. She is from Jefferson County Library, which is about, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes from St. Louis, and she's a technical services manager. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? Um, actually, Carol and then Kate and I both submitted things to talk about cataloging in a consortium. And they asked us to do a presentation together because obviously they work, but we are very, very different in how we approach this. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about our workflows. Um, CW Mars is centralized cataloging. We are as decentralized as one can possibly be. Uh, who do we work for? That question, I don't really know. <laughs> um, we have certification processes. Um, issues facing our consortium and then what does the future hold trying to leave on a positive note because cataloging can be sticky all right so missouri evergreen as in the title we are throughout missouri um we have 65 member libraries that is counting the five we are migrating in this year yes you heard that right godspeed mm -hmm. um 200 plus service outlets that includes branches and lockers there's maybe 20 lockers, so mostly branches. Um, there are, I say three, but I just hate to say two and a half consortium staff because it's it feels mean to say a person is a half, but I'm full-time, our executive director is full-time, and then we have a migration specialist who's actually half-time. All right, and CW Mars, uh, it stands for Central and Western Massachusetts Automated Resource Sharing. So CW Mars is much nicer to say. Um, we have 150 plus libraries, including five that we are migrating this year, uh, over 175 service outlets that are branches. I think we do have some lockers, but and we're not going to cover that. Um, and we have the executive director, as we all know, Jeanette, and 15 consortium staff, some part-time, some full-time. I'm jealous. <laughs> okay, so how, how, how is Missouri Evergreen organized? Um, well, we like to say the membership is at the top because really they vote on everything from fees to how things work. Um, we also have the executive board though. Um, it's made up of the nine members throughout MAC. Of course, we have executive Director Mickey Colwell, if you've met Mickey, shout out to Mickey if he's watching. Um, and then people throughout the consortia, they could be branches. Not all of them are though. Kate Coleman's actually on the executive board and obviously she's in tech services. Then we have our various committees. We have a cataloging committee composed of six members and then myself. Um, those are all actually catalogers. They catalog not full time, but are certified trained catalogers. And then the bottom we have all of our various 100 plus people throughout the consortium who catalog their resources so organized let's put that in quotation marks and when i saw this slide it's like well that doesn't really fit cw mars but i'll try and kind of crunch it in and then i'll throw up the organizational chart so you can see that it's not quite as like this so the user's council has one representative per member library. It's usually the director, but they can you know, use a coordinator as a proxy vote. There's an executive committee of 12 elected user's council members. 
There's the bibliographic committee, uh, which is, uh, there's no set number. So it's volunteer member catalogers plus myself as the CWMR's representative. For catalogers in the libraries, each library, well, six libraries have their own OCLC membership, so it's not quite completely centralized cataloging because they do their own thing. We have 39 catalogers who use our cataloging authorization to load records into the file that they find, and then the CAP Center will look them over and load them or not, as the case may be. But most libraries request the bibliographic records for us to load and then add and maintain their holdings. So they aren't necessarily what people think of as catalogers, but you know, we call them catalogers. And sometimes, you know, we have very small libraries of maybe 500 serving 500 residents. It might be their director who does the cataloging. It, you know, they may not have a dedicated cataloger and some larger libraries have multiple. So this is the CW Myers staff organizational chart and you can see me over there under library applications. And I have three staff in the CAT Center, two of whom are full-time, one is part-time, Two of us do original cataloging. Myself, when I have time, which can be not often. Uh, and the other original cataloger is only part-time. We do have someone on the other side of the library applications uh, who does help us with some of the simpler OCLC requests for like overlays and some merging, and they will sometimes do some record loading as long as you know, the requests look simple enough to us. And then of course she'll ask if we have, if she has any questions. And this is the CW Mars organizational chart. So you can see the users council on top, the executive committee, and then that kind of splits off into the committees, including the bibliographic committee, and then the CW Mars staff side, which reports to the executive director, and we are part of library applications. Uh, and yes, if that doesn't make sense to you, it, it can get a bit complicated. <laughs> and here's our staff or staff organizational chart, because as I said, we have two and a half staff at Missouri Evergreen. But this should be one of those explodey charts where everything intersects everything else, because and we've grown so much, we're um, just over 10 years old, um, that there should just be arrows going between everyone. Um, my position is only a um, year and a half old. Um, the migration specialist started three or four months ago. <laughs> um, so you can see why this is very, um, the question was even asked the other day, who is actually my boss? And Mickey and Kate Coleman both pointed at each other. <laughs> So, to be determined, everyone and no one. <laughs> so, yes, whereas I have a manager I report to, but then, you know, I also have to go through like the bibliographic committee. I can't just, we can't just make decisions on our own. The bibliographic committee has to make recommendations to the executive committee who will bring it to users council for voting approval or not. And so, yes. Game of Thrones. Yes, it's a game. <laughs> Just less blood, usually. So how do I, how does Mech herd cats? Okay, well, the cataloging committee, um, they really are the ones that, along with myself, we determine best practices. We recommend policy, policy changes. Uh, supervise me, I supervise myself, I guess, because Kate's not here, um, and maintain cat help, which is, is basically cat help's email that goes to everybody on the cataloging committee that says, hey, this is wrong, someone help. SOS literally from anyone in the branch who is cataloging goes to that email and someone reaches out to help. Um, then we have me, 
what do I do? I do a little of everything. Um, we have a certification process now where, so I grade and maintain that. I conduct regional trainings throughout the state. Um, I answer member questions by email um, and I'm involved in various cataloging projects right now. An authority project, I also do some original cataloging for some of the branches. I name it and it has to do with cataloging and I have done it in within a week probably of any certain time. It just depends. Um, and of course, then we have cataloging certification. This is a new thing for us. It used to much be much more Wild West, and it still is. Uh, but now at least we have uh, the start of, we have basic certification, which is going to be more item holdings, that kind of thing. Uh, then we have advanced certification, which gets into merging and overlaying records and like original cataloging. Upcoming, we say, is going to be LCHS and LCGFT, because as I said before, working on an authorities project, they're dirty, don't touch them, don't pretend you don't see them right now. But that is coming. And then people recertify it every couple of years. And then of course we have cataloging listserv, um, which is all the catalogers in Mac, and then CAD help. Um, so questions from members, reminders, uh, questions to committee members, it's all of those things. Uh, so this is our big circle with all the arrows pointing to each other. All right, so as I said, the certification process, right now it is written out. It is not in a very nice uh, quiz type environment where you would go in, you would read, you would take quizzes. Right now we have videos that people will watch. They will read through the documentation. They have, um, I think the first one has like six questions. They screenshot things, send their answers directly to my email. I pass or not pass them, say, give your stuff back once you've done this. The same with the advance. So you can imagine what that looks and feels like the weight of God. <laughs> I currently have, I think half a dozen people waiting for me to grade things currently because with turnover, this is always happening, right? Um, basic certification can be multiple people at a branch or a library system. Uh, you have to have at least one person advanced certified, but multiple people can be basic certified because that's the holdings of stuff that's right. A lot more people and they're touching those things. Uh, and then recertification process. We're in the process of determining how this is gonna look. I would like to get it into a system where there are automated quizzes and a ticketing system, please. <laughs> um, but that's coming up very quickly in a year and a half and we still have no idea, but there will be a recertification process. BBD, hold your breath for me. All right, so this is just kind of a breakdown of what's in everything. Um, <laughs> I'm giving this to our members because they're like, wait, what? It, a lot of people uh, remember they have to get recertified and then get re-angry at us that we made them do this. Um, but this is kind of just, again, what everything covers. And again, look, authorities is future, not even in there. Don't shame us, don't look at, don't look at our catalog subject headings currently. Okay, so how does CW Mars herd cats? Well, I have mentioned that it's a bit chaotic. Um, so the Bibliographic Committee has helped determine the best consortial cataloging practices and recommends policy changes to the Executive Committee, who will then decide whether or not they want to bring it to Users' Council and Users' Council will vote. Um, so that is for policies. Procedures can be different if you know they're more internal, thankfully, because we've just changed something. And it's like, do I need to take this, go through the process? And it's like, no, 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 that's okay. Um, there is a listserv just for the bibliographic committee members, which is not particularly active, but it can be. We have meetings as needed at least annually, and I would like to make them more frequent. It's just with so many things right now, they haven't been. Um, the cataloging discussions, we have the CW Cat Listserv, which 
we send updates and changes and uh, is also available to the library members to ask questions between them uh, or ask us because we, the Cat Center staff are all on that. Uh, we have started holding informal discussions for catalogers via Zoom, uh, and that's quarterly. It's based on the monthly director discussions that started uh, when the pandemic hit because nobody was in contact and it was like, well, what do we do with all this? Um, so the when I mentioned it, the uh, cataloger said, oh, yes, we'd like to do that. So we facilitate that and we usually have a couple of topics in case nobody has anything they want to discuss. We do have roundtable meetings annually and we have multiple ones just because we're so huge uh, in the past, they've been you know, in person. So we kind of regionally based. Uh, of course, we've been doing them via Zoom and perhaps in the future, there will be a bit of a, you know, at least two Zoom and maybe one in-person regional per year, but to be determined. And then there is also the Cat Express list serve, which is for the uh, those members, as I said, who have the OCLC authorization under our cataloging membership to go into Cat Express and look for OCLC records that way, rather than just send us the information or their items for us to look for. So the CAT Center creates, loads, overlays, maintains the MARC records for items such as books and DVDs and things that you can purchase through vendors, stuff like Library of Things or local history records or you know, kits that they put together themselves they can create records for them and they can be as brief as they want. They can go all out. And uh, so that's up to them. And we do have templates that they can use. Uh, so the CAT Center also conducts cataloging training for any you know, new staff or people who want refreshers or even if it's just, oh, I need help with this one particular part that we're doing. Um, we answer member questions. We have the uh, CAT Center email, which is all the questions and requests that come in. Uh, the original cataloging, they set up a, a separate email address just for that, uh, for those requests. Uh, so we facilitate the discussions and we send out the weekly updates and helpful hints and policy and procedure changes. The weekly updates are, this is where we are in our request queue. And we try to keep it the you know, new and retro requests within a few days of them being sent in to you know, some success at times and other times not so much. And the original cataloging queue is right now a nightmare. Um, and then, as I said, with the cataloging training, we do provide the initial cataloging training, which is just a lot of the basics of uh, Know, how to attach items, how to what to look for when you're sending in the, the retro or new requests to get the bib record into Evergreen. Uh, there is advanced training upon request, and that's more like the local history or I don't know how to catalog the library of things. Can you help me? Um, I've also put acquisitions and serials under there just because I do that. I'm responsible for that, but that's separate from the CAT Center for the most part. And we are planning to do a CAT Express uh, training for those CAT Express libraries first. And then if we start adding more CAT Express libraries, then you know to make sure that they know what to look for. So I'm in the process of preparing some documentation and training for that. So the basic training is, again, requesting MARC records, holdings, maintenance, cataloging standards, and best practices, especially like things like parts. This is how we want you to add the parts to varying success. 
Um, the advanced training is creating MARC records, like I said, for equipment, toys, games, kits, library of things, and local history collections, and other training uh, for libraries, again, interested in using the acquisitions or the serials or the CAD Express. So some of that is ongoing and some of that is forthcoming. So the main challenges for Missouri Evergreen, continuous growth. Uh, Galen actually told us at our users conference a couple of weeks ago that we're the fastest growing consortium in the US, if not the world. That's terrifying. <laughs> That's amazing, but terrifying. Um, as you can imagine, um, so we just had somebody come in a couple weeks ago. Um, we have somebody uh, getting ready to come up to bat, and then there are two people getting ready, putting on their uniforms to come play ball after them. Um, so what does that mean for the catalog and the match rate when all of those libraries come in? Um, now, Rogan has worked his magic, and our last librarian came, library came in with 72% match rate for bib records, 72 that's like that blew the bell curve out of the water, guys. <laughs> so it's great, but there's still 30% and still, right? So skill differentials. We have everyone from Kay Coleman, who has cataloged for 20 years, to this person who has no cataloging experience at all. And you're like, I like the cut of your jib. How do you feel about cataloging? Don't know what that is. It's happening. Come over here and look at this. Um, to anything in between. So vastly different skill sets. Somebody who has done this for a long time, somebody who's never clicked the button to look at the actual mark record. Um, cataloger buy-in. Now, how do we encourage the member catalogers to actually participate, be involved, and stay up to date in training? If you know, tell me. <laughs> um, tell us. It has helped having regional trainings where I actually go and meet these people because I a lot of people have been like, oh, you and Kate are intimidating, which if you've met Kate and I, we are not intimidating. Um, we may talk about random things and not talk about cataloging, but not intimidating. Um, so that's helped. The more we go out to do these regional trainings, the more questions than we get from these people via emails, which is what I want. Yes, do I have 300 emails? Yes, I'd like 300 more. That's fine please ask if you don't know. Um, but how do we get everyone there? Not everyone can or will attend trainings, even if they're in their library. And then of course, the being reactive, not proactive. How does anyone do that? Uh, hindsight's 2020 and there was the problem and we should have done this to fix it. How could we have seen that coming? Um, with us growing so fast and having such a small, dedicated Missouri Evergreen staff, I don't know how we get ahead of that, um, but that is a problem. I think that's a problem for everyone, um, specifically for us right now. <laughs> it's always something new cropping up that is a problem. Okay, and the main challenges facing CWMRs, and obviously this is not necessarily all of them, uh, more libraries equals more records. Right now we have 700 plus original cataloging requests sitting in our uh, original cataloging request inbox. And we have one part-time person who is doing it and she has been given extra hours for the past year and a half. And, you know, she just did 106 original records in April, and I'm not sure how many came in in that time, but, you know, it, we can't catch up, and I have not had the time to do any original cataloging, except for a couple of, you know, rush jobs when she wasn't available. Um, so there's that. Um, again, same thing, being reactive, not proactive. We know there are a lot of issues and improvements that we want to make. And you know, some of them, we kind of know how we want to make them. We just 
don't have the time right now because we have to set them aside for more immediate or higher priorities. And, you know, there's only so much time. Uh, the library staff changes. Again, with the uh, training, it's mostly right now on request. Whether it's the basic, you know, initial, how do you attach holdings or more advanced. I, we would like to go out and do more proactive training and have, you know, regular training sessions that we can do. Uh, so, you know, they don't always request training for when they have new people with cataloging permissions, and we would really like that to change. And again, so many cats, <laughs> uh, differing skill levels, library needs, you know, some of this, as I said, we, they serve 500 people. They might have one part-time person and a bunch of volunteers. They might be a large city with multiple catalogers. Uh, we have academic, a few academic libraries. We have a school library. So it's not just public libraries. And because they're, and staff time. And because there are all these conflicts, it makes it very difficult to reach any consensus on you know, how we should, should do things. So what does the future hold? So, so many <laughs> things, especially with five libraries coming on this year, keeping the certification updated. Uh, they don't like that. They didn't like it in the first place, but it's happening and it's going to continue to happen. Um, more training. Uh, authorities, 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 um, updating the documentation, um, hopefully like getting something that it, the alleviate frustrations, I think it's specifically to me, I think Kate put that in for me. <laughs> um, train the trainer. Can we break the state of Missouri into sections and have maybe an expert cataloger in each section that then it's easier to herd six cats than it is to herd a hundred cats? Yes, that would be great. Uh, who are these six people? And what do I have to give them to make them do it? Uh, because even the people who are the most qualified may not want to help in that way, right? Um, it would allow for more training opportunities, right? So maybe I could then step back and do Zoom. Maybe they could have more regionals. I mean, right now we were so excited to have six regionals a year where I hit every little thing in Missouri. But imagine if they could have multiple in their quadrant a year on specific things. So much training. And then, of course, documentation procedures. There's always going to be somebody to onboard. Um, there's always going to be staff turnover. And really, our documentation has never been great. We're coming in. I think we've been stealing little bit <laughs> all sorts of places and calling it our own and mushing it together. Um, but there's so many holes that still need to be filled in. Uh, everybody's always asking me questions. I'm like, isn't that in the, no, it's not. It should be in best practices. Um, the document should be like a hundred pages long at this point, but it's not because we haven't had the time to do that. Uh, but when do you find the time when you have so many cats? But we will, we will. Um, so for CW Mars, we are currently in the midst of conducting a strategic needs assessment. And if you haven't filled out your survey yet, please do so. Deadlines may fix. Um, so to help determine our library's cataloging needs, priorities, staff skills and abilities. Um, you know, one thing that we, I think, are asking on there is about potential mentorship opportunities. It, uh, you know, larger libraries or those who have been cataloging forever uh, would be interested in helping answer some questions for libraries who are, you know, library staff who are newer. That would be, you know, take a bit of pressure off the CAT Center. Uh, training and certification. We would very much like to offer regular training opportunities in addition to the on request. And we have, or we have been thinking and discussing uh, having the certification process similar to Missouri to perform certain cataloging tasks. There is one library staff member in particular who sends us very detailed 
emails about the parks and, and exactly how things are wrong and libraries, and it probably takes them more time to write the email than it would be for them to merge those two parts that aren't done to the standard. Um, so it's a matter of, you know, would libraries be comfortable with library staff who have training and are certified to make some changes to the MARC records that are shared as opposed to their own library of things or whatever they've done for their own specific uh, records. And then documentation and procedures. So again, everything from onboarding to migration to staff turnover requires easily accessible and up-to-date documentation. A lot of our website, uh, the cataloging section has not been updated in quite a while. It's still showing you know, pre 3.7, so it's not Angular screenshots. Um, and so one of my, our newest staff member has been reviewing the cataloging section of the website to look at what changes could be made. Uh, she's coming from a non evergreen library. So she has the, you know, the new fresh face even though she knows, you know, cataloging, oh, do these steps actually work still? And how how could these be improved for someone new to Evergreen or who is not necessarily a cataloger? And uh, so we're in the process of doing that and reorganizing it so it makes more sense <laughs> to try and find the pages we're looking for. So how do you herd cats? Yeah. Yeah very carefully um, and with lots of help and lots of emails between lots of people. And lots of caring. And lots of hold hand, <laughs> hands of people and telling them it will be okay. Um, we do what we can with what we have. Yes. <laughs> so thank you. Do you have any questions? Yes. I drive. <laughs> yeah. And, yep. So, how do the regional trainings work? How do I get around everything, et cetera? Lucky for Missouri Evergreen, I was a long haul trucker in a second life. I can drive 10 hours at a time and I'm like, let's go, let's do this. Um, so, I drive everywhere, just me, let's go. I have a cataloging bin of things that are original including a big long metal ruler, which scares everyone for measuring books. <laughs> the regional trainings are during the day. They are six hours long. MEC provides lunch. Lunch is transformative. If you offer a catalog or lunch, they will come. They are very driven by food. We're food driven people. Um, so in the morning we do set. And then I always, this is funny. I have a says maybe too much about me, but wicker purse that looks like a wombat and everybody always thinks that's hilarious because it is. And I have everybody write down a question they want answered. It's the first thing we do. We put it in there and then we go through a certain set. And then at the end, before you do lunch, I answer some of those questions. And then we have lunch and then the second half. Now it's composed of basically the things I've been asked in email the most. So it's going to be always parts are in there, monitor parts are always in there. Um, but it's going to be a whole mess of things. At the end of the day, we always catalog an original book by passing it around the table. And you could have a novice cataloger who has no cataloging training at all, and like a Kay Coleman, and I make everyone take a turn, and we do it together. Everyone loves it, and it's very helpful for learning. I wish I could do a whole training of just that. Um, so that is what they consist of. Thus far, I've only had to uh, like stay and spend the night somewhere at one of the quadrants in Missouri. It was the one that was the farthest from my house, um, but we still have two to go. And they've been a lot of fun meeting the catalogers. So that's how regionals work in Missouri. If we were a smaller state, it, it, would, it would be a lot easier. But <laughs> and I believe there were uh, regional trainings prior to my arrival. I've only been at CW Mars itself for just over a year. 
So of course, pandemic. <laughs> and uh, but prior to that, I do believe there were, you know, going out to libraries in regions and doing trainings. Um, and again, hopefully someday we'll be able to do that because in person can be a lot. It's, I think I found that uh, for the initial training, doing it on Zoom is nice because we can go back and forth sharing screens and you know they can pick up their whatever items they've set aside and you know do the attaching of the items and all of that themselves after they've seen me do it a bit and have that explained but uh yeah i i do think that having you know, getting out to see the people is very important any more questions i will say that missouri is a slightly more my catalog is slightly more zoom averse mm -hmm. Um, so they, we sent out a survey and said, how would you like regional trainings or trainings in general? And most of the people said in training, come see me. Can you come to my house? Let's have <laughs> dinner. Yeah. Um, very few people were like, let's do a zoom. And when they were like, let's do a zoom, they're like, let's do a zoom with me and maybe one of my coworkers. Um, so that's difficult. And I'm trying to make that as possible <laughs> as I can by seeing everyone, but you can't. Yeah. And we've, we've blacked out summer reading just because no, everyone went, no, no, no. And I said, I get it. So we, and then we'll start again in fall. <laughs> it's like, we all like the idea of shorts until we put shorts on. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> Any other questions for us? Ask us something. Comments, tell us, tell know, us how I, you do it. Yeah, you're. <laughs> how 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 do you guys do certification? I, I talked to Katie and they have a ticketing system and I want it. I want it. I want what they have. So it sounds like uh, some of the consortia uh, have the highly, the more advanced trained 
library catalogers uh, train the more ba do the more basic training rather than rely on someone centrally. Oh, so removing permissions for those who aren't following the policy. Usable. <laughs> Usable. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very clear, pol clear policies and procedures, and make sure that you know they're accessible to everyone and reminders sent. And so communication, again. And also, uh, right. Mm -hmm. John, was there some chat comments? Yeah. <laughs>
yeah, so again, size. And that is something we get asked about a lot also. We have, how do you catalog an evergreen, but also just, how do you catalog? Yeah. It's two different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you.